Hey guys, it's Riley and welcome to my channel on this lovely Tuesday. What's up? How you doing this week? Leave me a comment down below letting me know how you're doing. Today's video I wanted to talk about a topic that is fairly popular within the trans community and that is dysphoria. I kind of wanted to touch on things about that, break down the definition of what it is, and kind of explain other things around that and the trans community. So without further ado, let's hop into it. I've got the definition here of gender dysphoria and I'm going to read it out to you. The condition of feeling one's emotional and psychological identity as male or female to be opposite to one's biological sex. The first thing when I actually read the medical definition of this was that the definition is incredibly binary. And that's very strange because there's such a spectrum when it comes to gender and trans stuff and dysphoria in general that the definition really can't be that binary. And honestly, in my opinion, there's no such thing as the opposite sex. Most people feel that male is opposite female and female is opposite male, but this is also completely disregarding the fact that intersex people do exist and it is a third sex. With there being three sexes, there can't necessarily be an opposite sex. And it says your psychological identity as male or female to be opposite to one's biological sex, and this is implying that there are only two genders. Which is now dictionary definition, there are more than two genders. Gender queer is now an official gender in the dictionary. Because you also have non-binary people, genderqueer people, gender fluid people, agender people, trigender people. There are so many other genders that the definition of being trans isn't just you've got the parts of one and you think you're the other. Being trans is a lot more complicated than that. It is definitely not that binary. And especially with this textbook definition, most people feel like you have to experience this absolute disconnect from your body and your mind in order to be trans, and that is a hundred percent not true. You do not have to experience any type of dysphoria to be a valid trans person. And this confuses a lot of people because the people are like, if you don't experience dysphoria, how do you know you're trans? I'll use myself as an example. I do not experience gender dysphoria. I do not feel like there is a disconnect between my mind and my body, and I do not feel uncomfortable with my body in the slightest. But I still know that I have female anatomy and I identify as male. But I have absolutely no problem problems with my female anatomy. I know that psychologically and socially and in every other aspect I am male and that's the only thing that matters and that is the only thing that is important. I don't have to hate myself or hate my body to be trans. I don't experience a disconnect. I am perfectly comfortable with my body and the way my body is and the only thing I intend to do is get top surgery. And it's not even that I'm totally uncomfortable with my chest, it's just that I feel like I would be more comfortable without it. So if you are out there and you're a trans person that does not experience dysphoria, that is totally okay. Your identity is still totally real and totally valid and you cannot let these binary people try and tell you that you're not trans. I know that there are a lot of medical professionals that also believe that you have to fit this definition of dysphoria in order to be trans, but legitimately it is wrong and it is not true. Being trans is medically diagnosed as gender identity disorder, and I personally find that absolutely ridiculous. First of all, it's not a disorder. Second of all, it says you have to fit these binary standards of these dysphoria and these deadlines in order to be considered trans, when literally the definition of transgender is feeling you are a gender different than the one that you were assigned at birth. So you don't have to experience dysphoria in order to be a valid trans person. But if you do experience dysphoria, that's totally okay. I do understand what it's like to have dysphoria because I had dysphoria at the beginning of coming to terms with myself. I just don't happen to have dysphoria anymore. There are so many things you can do to lessen dysphoria, whether that is buying to dress more masculine, more feminine, wear makeup, don't wear makeup, whatever you need to do to feel more affirmed in your identified gender. I just wanted to touch on that you do not have to experience said dysphoria in order to be a valid trans person, and if you do experience dysphoria, that is also totally fine and totally valid. But also the definition of gender dysphoria is incredibly binary and not really accurate and kind of outdated, so I wouldn't necessarily go by the dictionary definition of gender dysphoria. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and leave a comment 
comment down below what are some future trans education videos you would like to see me do. I would love getting your input on the things that you would like to see me do and the things that you would like to hear from me and hear me discuss. Your input is incredibly important so I will definitely go through all of those comments and like up some when I get some good video ideas. You should definitely subscribe because I post two videos a week here on this channel, one on Tuesdays and one on Thursdays, so that's two videos a week coming your way. You can also follow me on all of my social media, which is at the Riley Kyle on every single platform. All of the links to all of these social media I have and everything will be down in the description below. That's all I've got. I love you guys and I will see you guys on Thursday. Okay, bye.